Allora, siamo qui con Carmelo Espeleta che fra poco ci farà vedere in azione, visto che è stato anche lui un ex pilota, come va la Ducati Moto E. Cosa significa per te avere Ducati anche nel campionato del mondo delle moto elettriche? Bene, quando abbiamo cominciato quattro anni fa insieme a Enel con, con Energica era un primo passo, tutto il mondo pensava che cosa sarebbe, non abbiamo avuto molta fortuna all'inizio perché si è bruciato tutto, <ride> ne, i commenci, se i commenci sono duri dopo le cose vanno meglio, dopo quattro anni veramente, dopo parlare con, con Ducati che hanno sempre un, una grinta per tutte queste cose abbiamo pensato che era un step importante di fare un, un ammogliamento. Di... Come è nato? questa partnership con Ducati perché sappiamo che la Ducati adesso ha otto moto in, in moto GP e addirittura l'intero schieramento di partenza della, della moto e come è nata? Chi è stato il primo a fare la mossa? La Ducati ha otto moto in moto GP perché i team che hanno diritto di prendere la moto pre preferiscano prendere quella certo. e, e con lo quale la Ducati ha otto moto perché è così brava per convincere a, a quello che hanno il diritto di partecipare. Certamente. Dopo di quello, come è andato? No, par noi parliamo molto, molto con tutti i costruttori, abbiamo pensato come poteva essere la, la seguente fase di la Moto I e è stata una conversazione insieme. No? Ovviamente non mi ricordo chi è stato no. prima di parlare o no, ma l'abbiamo parlato insieme, è stato anche con conversazioni con con il gruppo Volkswagen che si è chiesto che pensavamo di questo e finalmente... Senti, secondo te gli spettatori della Moto E sono gli stessi della Moto GP oppure con questa nuova categoria andiamo a prendere un pubblico diverso di ragazzi e ragazze più giovani? Io penso che sono... stiamo cercando un pubblico più giovane anche per le altre categorie e, e così stiamo, ma per me gli spettatori della Moto E sono, sono la stessa gente che è appassionata della velocità, della moto e di tutto quello. All'inizio era un po' quella questione del rumore, adesso noi vediamo che ogni volta in più rimane più gente per la gara. Tu sai di... che quest'anno nella Moto E corre anche Luca Salvadori che è un pilota sì, sì. veloce che corre nel National ma che è anche uno youtuber. Sì. Col discorso video vi state parlando perché... Sì, sì, ovviamente quello è una cosa che non si può dimenticare nel tempo che stiamo vivendo. O, ogni volta può darsi io non sono il meglio esperto di Dorna, ma la Dorna è esperta in questo per, per lavorare insieme in questa cosa. Va bene, grazie, grazie Carmelo. Grazie. We are here with uh, Philippe uh, Joaquin from Michelin. Obviously, we are talking about Moto E. But one uh, strange thing about Moto E is not only the fact that it's an electric bike, but also that we have uh, Michelin tires that came from uh, fruit, lemon, orange, uh, kind of mixed salt. May you explain how is it possible to have... Uh, to have uh, <coughs> A tires that look like uh, uh, slick tires and performances uh, from a slick tire capability of Michelin, but uh, having different technology in building this tire. Mm -hmm. Generally speaking, uh, we have a high performance tire in which more than half of it is coming from what we call sustainable sources. Sustainable sources is either coming from natural sources or from recycling sources. Uh, in this tire, yes, we have uh, orange and li lemon peels that we use uh, to bring resins in the tires. We also have sunflower oil that we put in this tire. We have heavier tree rubber that's coming from natural sources also in, in, in this tire. We have recycled ca carbon black, so for those ones you would take Uh, used tires, you reprocess them uh, and you bring new carbon blacks out of those tires and bring that into this tire. So from this kind of technology you just extract also performance? The point is that we do high performance tire with sustainable materials. It's showcasing the fact that the future is sustainable and is performance also. It's not a compromise. So this year, this tire for example for this season is better in performance and with more sustainable material than what it has than what it has last year two questions one when this kind of technology will arrive uh, on production bikes and second question very important for the, for a motorcycle enthusiast is the cost of the tire this technology costs less or more 
than the actual uh, technology of normal tires. So as far as the pace, when those technologies will come in, I would say the street tires, uh, we are committed at Michelin to have 40% of sustainable material overall in the Michelin mix for all applications, be it uh, motorbike, uh, passenger car, heavy duty trucks. So we will have 40% of these raw material in 2030 in our tires, and we'll go up to 100% in 2050. Uh, as far as cost, there is a matter of scaling. When we're gonna scale up those technologies, we'll have, by effect of mass, uh, raw material cost that would be at the level where we are today, I would say, and this is not going to be a matter of cost of the technologies in, I, 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 itself in the tire. Thank you very much. Uh, we are here with uh, Nicola. Nicola was the number one boss from Michelin, and then uh, he decided to switch to uh, drive the, the Moto E from, uh, from, from Dorna. So he's the man to talk about the championship that started in 2019 with Energica and now switched to, to Ducati. What do you think about this championship? Because you are a man that always lives with the uh, endothermic engine. Yeah, you know, the, the objective we had at the beginning was to show that with electric bikes, we could have proper bike racing, you know, with very entertaining bikes. And um, I'm quite happy about the results because when you look at the, at the bike, with the format they had, you know, very short format with riders having all the same bikes, I think the show has been really good. And um, that was the first objective. And so I'm happy about that. You know that now the, the, the entire world is switching uh, to electric, but Moto E is uh, also uh, getting a, a road in advance. I'm talking about your old friend of Michelin, because uh, today they talk to me about tires that are made from lemon, uh, flour. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, I mean, you know, race, uh, it's common to say that um, races racing series are used as a proving ground to develop the technology of tomorrow and it's it's true i mean it's what has been happening and it's what happening now again with the uh, with the electric mobility and um, the michelin has been for us from the beginning they have improved their tires constantly constantly i mean talking about lap times you know what, what is important yeah. for the riders but at the same time, making them more and more sustainable. So that's great, and that's the way you know most of the the greatest number of companies are going to work out the business from now. So it's uh, it's really key. You can say the same, you know, on the bike side, of course, with uh, Ducati stepping in right now. Dominicali already explained that uh, they have already in mind the next step they're going to introduce. So that's for us. That's absolutely great. So next week we will have the first MotoGP race, but the first uh, Moto E race will be in Le Mans, your place. Yes, yes. What can we expect in, in Le Mans, especially for, for the weather? That but the weather, we know what to expect, yeah, you yeah. know. Rainy weather, for sure. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but we will not have a dry track. If we have, we'll be very, very lucky. But anyway, you know, the riders are, are used to that. The bike is ready for that as well. We've just been to Jerez and we were unlucky to have yeah. three days of very bad conditions. And you know what? One thing quite remarkable is that three days with either heavy rain or humid track have been only one crash, one yeah. single crash. So that means that the, the and, and, and a lot of riders, nobody had tried that bike before. So it means that the bike is very well balanced. Of course, the tires work very well in these conditions as well, but it's easy to ride. The electronics is great, and uh, and I'm sure they will have a lot of fun, and they will put up a very good show. If I remember well, the rider that crashed is my friend uh, Luca Salvadori, maybe. Um, uh, Man Mantovani. Ah, crash. Mantovani, yes. but also Salvadori make a small maybe scratch. It's ma yeah, maybe it's yeah. a small scratch, ah, okay. but, but the, the real crash was from uh, Mantovani. Ah. Uh, the the, the uh, track was nearly dry but not completely and there were some wet patches 
and he, he, he crushed on the white punch. Thank you very much, Nicola. Thanks a lot.